Welcome to the final section of the course. We will discuss a popular Python-based software suite known as Scrapy. Scrapy is a big package. These videos focus on a handful of important concepts and create a simple crawler to demonstrate how the parts fit together. Next I show how to start a Scrapy project and how to add a Scrapy spider. Next I show how to program a simple spider that gets data from Reddit's main pages. We wrap up by using the spider we created and see how we could use its output. Let's dive right into Scrapy. This video will cover some useful tools provided by Scrapy. So what is Scrapy? It's a software package for crawling websites and collecting structured data from them. The package is built on top of Python and users interact with Scrapy with Python, but the package provides command line utilities that allow for easy crawler creation, project management, and prototyping. Various Scrapy objects and functions manage aspects including setting and managing HTTP requests, HTML parsing, and data storage. This is far from everything Scrapy can do, and after watching these videos, you should know enough to start digging deeper into Scrapy and perhaps make some simple crawlers. Scrapy is easy to install. If you're using Anaconda, you can use Scrapy via Conda. Scrapy is also available through pip. Spiders are the main objects of interest in Scrapy. These are the objects that crawl the web. The spider is provided a base URL from which to start crawling the web. In principle, a spider will do three tasks. Parse a web page, collect data from it, then find and follow a link to the next page to crawl. Scrapy provides a command line shell useful for developing spiders and other web scraping tools. Any spiders written in a project can be accessed via the shell and tested. Another use of the shell is developing the commands that collect data from a web page. The objects that Scrapy uses for managing a web page are created when the shell is told to handle a request to a particular URL. These objects resemble those available to a spider, so spider developers can try out the commands for data extraction the spiders will eventually need. The shell is by default just the base Python interpreter with additional objects imported. If IPython is installed and available, IPython will be used instead of the base Python interpreter. You will likely be interacting with Scrapy via a shell. In these videos, I will be interacting with Scrapy via the Anaconda prompt. Here we see the Anaconda prompt. I have already installed Scrapy. In these videos, we're going to be thinking about scraping Reddit's main page. I start up the Scrapy shell with the following command. This tells the shell what page I'm going to want to start scraping first. Scrapy has now loaded, and notice that it's using the IPython shell. We already have some objects available to us, and in particular we're interested in the response object, which contains the data that we received from the Reddit server. This is the object that we will be using for scraping. I've already looked at the source code for the Reddit main page, using some of the techniques we've seen in other sections. It is of course possible that Reddit's code will change in the future and that the commands I'm about to enter won't work anymore. We can use XPath to select elements from the Reddit web page. For example, I can get the div that contains all of the interesting entries of the Reddit main page, the links to Reddit threads, and the site table div, that is the div with ID site table. How can I access it? With the following command. What's returned is a selector based on the XPath command that I can use for further extraction. We also can use CSS selectors. So for example, I would like to select all divs in the object that we selected with this command, but I want these divs to have the ID link. We can select via CSS like so. The string that I'm passing to the CSS method is a CSS selector. I'm not going to talk about CSS selectors at all. I'm simply making you aware of their existence, and I invite you to look into CSS selectors on your own. The translation for this command is to select all divs with the class link. The advantage of selecting this way is if we were using XPath, we would have to use a very special and convoluted command in order to select all divs that include the class link, but are possibly members of other classes as well. Selecting the class this way will select all divs with the class link, and also includes divs that have other class attributes as well. We end up with a list of links, resembling that you would see on Reddit's main page. Suppose we wanted to find 
the link to the next page that a hypothetical spider would visit. We do so with this command. This selects all links within spans with class nextbrev. Suppose we want to select the destination of those links. I could replace a with at href. And this will select the attribute href wherever it appears in this span. Notice the result of data. It gets you the actual destination as opposed to the HTML tag. If I wanted to get the actual string instead of a selector object, I could then use the method extract first, and it will return the string. If I were to use extract, it's possible that I would get a list instead of a string, but that list would be a list of strings. So this would be what you would use if there were multiple objects in the list and you want to get the href attribute for all of them. Now let's get a list of all divs with links in them. This is similar to the command that we had before, but I'm going to actually save the result in the object threads. This will be a list. Here's what the first element of this list looks like. We can actually see the XPath that was used to select this object. Notice that there is some translation of the CSS into XPath notation. Let's select the title of the class. This is going to select all HTML links that are members of the class title. In other words, the title of the Reddit thread. Now this doesn't actually get me the text of the title. If I wanted to do that, I could add on the XPath selector text. And that will get me text contained in the title, what we would consider the actual title of the Reddit thread. Let's say I wanted the author. Then I would want all links of class author. The last bit of data that I would be interested in for my scraper is the score of this Reddit thread, which is the difference of upvotes from downvotes. This selector will get that score. The score of the Reddit thread that I selected was 31,306. These are the three data points that I was interested in. All of these commands are going to be used in some way when I'm writing my spider. This process allowed me to prototype those commands before I actually wrote the spider so I would know how things would work. So this is a useful way to figure out what your spider code needs to do before actually doing it. As I mentioned, your spider isn't going to be interactive. It's not going to be an object that you can play around with like you would in a Jupyter Notebook. It's going to be in a script and then you're going to deploy that script and that script is going to execute, which makes it a little bit more difficult to debug. This tool allows you to try out idioms before you put them into a spider. Thus, it's pretty useful to use the shell. We now wrap up our session. But remember these commands. These are going to show up in the spider that I'm going to write in a future video, and I'm not going to explain them again.